A very good morning, good evening, good afternoon, and welcome to another episode on the Life of Signatures Radio. Thank you so very much for tuning in. I don't know where it is that you're listening to these episodes, but I'm glad that you are. Life Signatures Podcast is always going to be talking about purpose, productivity, and resilience. Those three things, I do believe, are critical in anyone's life. And our lives actually revolve around mastery of those three things. If we can master purpose... If we can master productivity and if we can master resilience, then I guess that we're going to be people of success and people of significance in this life. We are in the middle of a series when we are kind of talking about resilience anyway. So in the middle of a series, we've been talking about discouragement, how to handle discouragement. And uh, we are ending that today by talking about why we must deal decisively and quickly with personal discouragement. We're coming to a close of that uh, series uh, this day. So I want you to stay tuned. Welcome to the Life Signatures Podcast with Lawrence Namale. Lawrence is a life coach, author, and keynote speaker who loves to tackle different topics on purpose, productivity, and resilience. His mission in life is to awaken all your boundless possibilities available in you. Life Signatures Podcast is dedicated to bring to reality every single person who knows that deep down in their gut, there's got to be more to life than this. And now, here is your host, Lawrence Namale. We have learned so far that we've got to deal decisively and actively with discouragement the moment it sets in. We might not win the war the first day when we start going against discouragement. It might simmer for a minute or for a day or something. But the worst we can do is to do nothing when discouragement comes. At, At best, you need to get some help from somebody. You know, call in the troops and call in your trusted fellows and tell them, I'm going through this and going through that and I feel do- down, I feel low. Why don't you like do something for me? There are some guys, uh, some Christians who say, pray for me, you know, shoot up a prayer for me, man. I'm, I'm going through this and cover me. That's the word they normally use. Cover me a little. See, the worst you can do is to go through discouragement alone. In fact, you're going through discouragement alone and your mouth is zipped. You're not saying anything. Yesterday we say that a preacher normally says that uh, you should run against your enemy with your mouth open. Run towards your enemy with your mouth open. Don't cover your mouth. Don't close your mouth when discouragement comes in. And I know that's the first thing that it does. When discouragement enters through our door, I mean, we, it forces some silence in us. And we retreat into the mind and we start, you can always see the gears in our minds rotating at different speeds and different directions, topsy-turvy. But we are saying nothing. We are doing nothing. This internal meditation on the negative, that discouragement has just opened that particular door, it, it's a killer. And we need to scratch that city, we need to come to that place where we say no. I'm not going to be discouraged. I know it it sounds, this is very theoretical, but I tell you, I've been alive for some decades and I can tell you that some of the worst things that I've allowed in my life, one of them is when I let discouragement run its course. You know, at the end of the day, when you look back, when you've just gotten out of it, you look back and you see that some of the things that you thought were real were actually illusionary. Some of the things about yourself right now, your self-worth right now, and even your estimation of the future. When you are going through a discouraged moment, they were illusionary. Some of you, you never have imagined in a thousand years that you will be driving and having your own house and your own family and someone who loves you. 
because of that moment when you're going through discouragement you thought that was it that was over life will never simmer for you life will never sizzle for you it was an illusionary effect of discouragement an illusionary assessment of the discouragement you're going through so we've got to learn to decisively deal with it and we say that there are just two ways of dealing with this this discouragement we say that the first way is to make sure that you do what is within your control that's what we talked about yesterday you know another illusion when discouragement comes is that there is nothing i can do oh i don't have strength to do x y z and so on it's kind of like the many options that you might be having in life and that's just the thing one of the biggest places of your power in life is to have options and discouragement when it comes in it cheats you that you have no option i tell you there are very many things that we can actually do it's just that probably we don't feel like we want to do them or we just we're not inspired or motivated to do them but we always have personal options so find something that is within your control and do it either to perpetuate your prosperity your momentum your uh, consistency or find something that can help you to get back on track and fight that spirit of discouragement just continue being above board above the waters don't give up and start just sail with the with the currents swimming with the currents Secondly what I want to end today with is that you've got to realize what's outside of your control. You know why that's important? Because some of us engage in battles that we've already lost trying to get a grip of what we don't have control over. You don't have control over the El Nino rains. You don't have control over when it's going to rain actually he don't have control over earthquakes there is absolutely nothing you can do about this and you know you need to know but wait for a minute the question is how good are you at waiting how good are you at waiting because when you are not in control the only thing that sometimes you can do is wait how do you wait how do i wait one will easily realize that discouragement is caused by a large share from what which is outside of us outside of our control delays i mean you've submitted your proposal or whatever it is or actually you've worked for the government Two years down the line, they have not paid you. What is due to you? Hmm? It is outside of your control. Delays alone, things done out of our desire, it's out of our control. Things spoken against us are outside of our control, but they can result in discouragement. What I'm yet to establish is the power of what is outside of our control in helping us to solve discouragement. That is something that cannot be established. Right? Things spoken against us and so on. It is not going to be something we can know. The power that is outside of our control in helping us to solve a discouraged moment. I do not know how that looks like. and probably it doesn't even exist that you get your discouragement solved by something that is outside of your control can i tell you what comes close to that i alluded to that yesterday it is when you call someone else and tell them pray for me cover me like i've said earlier cover me Hey, could be outside of your control whatever it is that they do. Just to know that there is someone out there who is propping themselves up, you know, standing for you. Standing with you, that's the word, standing with you. Right? 
You've, they've got your back. They've got your six covered. Right? That has a way of encouraging you. It's probably outside of your control. But it has a way of encouraging you. There is no one that is exempt from going through. No one that is exempt from going through a moment of discouragement. And at the center of anything progressive that you and I will do, the most critical thing that we need to cover, the Bible alludes to this. It is a state of mind. Actually, the Bible says, guard your heart with all you have because the issues of life flow from it. The issues of life, the state of your mind, the state of your heart, when it is discouraged, is the first thing. When there's discouragement, is the first thing that is affected. It's the state. When discouragement comes in, it directly impacts our state of mind negatively. Immediately, it impacts it negatively. And when our state of mind is impacted negatively, or our hearts are impacted negatively, we don't reason properly. We don't reason creatively. We don't reason progressively. We actually, instead of advancing, we want to retreat. That's why we have to be very militant in dealing with whatever happens. It is not a fun thing to be discouraged. Neither is it fun to deal with it. But we've got to do it. Once we have fully conquered the discouragement, our state of mind, our hearts, will most definitely have changed. It will be healthier, either be healthier, it will be positive, it will be hopeful, and even, I get it might be more resilient. It will be accommodating at times to, uh, it will be able to recognize other people who are going through the same kind of a discouraged moment and you know that i went through it they can also go through it and therefore you become the outside force that can be able to help them none is exempt from being discouraged even the mightiest of us all will suffer discouragement and what they will have to learn to do is to handle it and to move on and have discovered that the more you get discouraged the more you let discouragement linger The more you continue staying with it, the more it becomes devastating. The earlier we start dealing with it, the better. It should be noted that discouragement can actually be a Trojan horse. You know what that means? It's it's delivering other things. It's like an entry. It's like the open open door uh, delivering other vices that will be detrimental to our healthy state of mind, our physical minds, unless we deal with it decisively. It doesn't come alone. It's got cousins, got brothers and sisters. When discouragement sneaks into your life, it will soon enough invite its friends. Some of these friends are mental sickness, laziness, procrastination, toxicity in relationships, lack of inspiration and motivation, and deep productivity, wanting to give up, feelings of failure and guilt, Things even like suicide, things like addiction, they, they, they don't start by themselves. The front runner, the head of the spear, the point of the spear is discouragement. These ones are just following. Discouragement is, is the, the leader of this, of this army. So don't just look at discouragement as if it's a standalone guy. This guy is loaded. He's coming with things that will bring you down. That's why you and I, when discouragement comes into our lives, we've got to deal with it decisively. Some of us, we've lost contracts. We've lost our moral authority. We've lost our place of spiritual authority because we were discouraged and we let discouragement bring in other relatives. That's why we've got to militantly deal with it decisively. We need to learn together how we can handle this enemy of discouragement. And I ask uh, the people on social media how each of them handled discouragement at some point in time. And I got very interesting answers. Maybe I should share with those 
uh, you with those uh, I should share with you those answers in the succeeding uh, episodes I think I should do that but today we have looked at that and we've seen how we can be able to overcome discouragement and then tomorrow we're going to start talking about something else until then bye bye Thank you for listening to Life Signatures Radio. If you enjoyed today's show, subscribe to Life Signatures Radio on iTunes, Stitcher, or visit our website at lifesignatures.libsyn.com. Life Signatures Radio, fresh, clean, and inspiring.